we want to simplify the given complex fraction. And we'll discuss how to simplify this complex fraction using two different methods. Let's begin by simplifying using method two. The first step in method two is to find the least common denominator of the fractions in the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction. Once we do this, in step two, we'll multiply the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction by the LCD. So to help us determine the least common denominator of the fractions on the top and on the bottom, let's write seven and one as fractions with denominators of one. So we can write the top as negative seven over one minus four over P. We'll write the bottom as one over one minus five over P. We don't have to write negative seven and one in fraction form, but it may make it easier to determine the least common denominator. So looking at all the fractions on the top and the bottom, because these two fractions have a denominator of P and these two fractions have a denominator of one, we should be able to recognize that P is the least common denominator. So because the least common denominator is equal to P, following step two, we now multiply the top and bottom of the complex fraction by P. So we'll multiply the top by P and the bottom by P. So multiplying on the top, again, this is just negative seven, so negative seven times P, and then minus four over P times P. On the bottom, we would have just one times P, and then minus five over P times P. So on the top, we have negative seven P. P as a fraction would be P over one. We have a common factor of P between the numerator and denominator, so P over P simplifies to one, so we just have minus four. On the bottom, we have one P or P minus, again, this is just P over one, P over P simplifies the one, so we just have five times one or five. So the denominator is just P minus five. Negative seven P minus four does not factor because the only common factor between these two terms is one, and P minus five also does not factor because the only common factor between P and five is one, and therefore this is the simplified form of the given complex fraction. So this is how we use method two to simplify the given complex fraction. Now simplify this again using method one. So beginning with the original complex fraction, method one, we simplify the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction, which means you want to find the difference on the top and on the bottom. We know in order to add or subtract fractions, we need a common denominator, which on the top would be P. So multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by P, and the same thing in the denominator. We'll multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by P. So now the top is negative seven P over P minus four over P. In the bottom we have P over P, minus five over P. And now we can go ahead and subtract. On the top, the common denominator is P, and the numerator would be negative seven P minus four. On the bottom, the common denominator is P, and the numerator is P minus five. Now that we've simplified the numerator and denominator of the complex fraction, Step two, we write the complex fraction as a division problem. Because this fraction bar means division, we can write this as the top fraction divided by the bottom fraction. So we'd have the top fraction divided by the bottom fraction. And now we can write this quotient as a product because dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So as a product, the first fraction stays the same. And then instead of dividing by this fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. So we'd have P over the quantity P minus five. Before multiplying, notice how there's a common factor of P between the numerator and denominator that would simplify to one. Multiplying the numerators, we just have the quantity negative seven P minus four. Multiplying the denominators, we just have the quantity P minus five. So of course we get the same simplified expression using method one or method two. One last thing I do want to mention 
is if we're entering this in from the keyboard, we would need a set of parentheses around the numerator and denominator so the computer interprets our entry correctly. Of course, we can also use the equation tool called MathQuill. Thank you for watching.